First off, y'all gonna quit trying me, man. Because to call this a newborn hat, somebody said, oh, take off, call the newborn hat. I, come on, now. No, this is mine. This ain't Carter's, man. But anyway, Ravens fans are crazy. <laughs> My guy said, how to lose Lamar Jackson in 10 days. First question came from my guy, Jared. Uh, he said, hey, Engraven, again, I want to thank you for sticking to your guns and explaining to other Ravens creators, for example, Sarah Ellison, that you want more weapons on offense. I love and totally agree that our offensive scheme needs to incorporate more from the passing game to make a deep playoff run. Thank you. I, I agree. Uh, it's so frustrating to see fans talk about going back to 2019 when we all know what happened to end that year. It's funny because I was watching my guy, uh, Hendo, Ravens Online Ungatekeepers, um, and he had a video last night with one of his boys, and his, his, they were talking about if the Ravens go back to 2019, they were like, well, what do you think defense is going to do when it comes to that, that offense? And I was like, ooh, that's so fire. Anyway, um, he says, but I think I have to I have a point to bring to the table to change the minds of the masses and end the Giro cult. How to lose Lamar Jackson in 10 days. As we know, Lamar Jackson has been absent from voluntary OTAs for the first time in his career, and reports have been that he hasn't actively engaged the front office in contract negotiations. In my opinion, although the Ravens have added very solid talent across the board this offseason, which they have, they have not yet secured their franchise. If you want Lamar Jackson to feel comfortable committing his future to the organization, then you have to give him something worth staying over. I can guarantee Eric DaCosta that if he goes and gets a DK Metcalf, Lamar will stay. Hey, you go and get a DK Metcalf. I'm flying up there to give a nice congratulations to you. I go give Eric DaCosta a big hug myself. Uh, but anyway, um, I can guarantee. Oh, yeah, yeah. He said, I can guarantee John Harbaugh that if he turns the page on Greg Roman, Lamar will stay. Yeah. That, see, that one right there. I think um, it's not just Greg Roman, though. It's the Ravens philosophy. We said this from the jump, especially this offseason. Greg Roman, they could let Greg Roman go tomorrow. A lot of Ravens fans would be happy. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Da, da, da. But until they actually have a philosophy shift, and again, every time I say this, I'm not talking about, all right, we're just going to scrap the running game. But look, with or without Greg Roman, the Ravens' run game will be just fine. It will be just fine. What I would love to see the Ravens do, and with Greg Roman, that's why I feel like this year, um, there are no excuses for anybody. Um, I think there shouldn't have even been excuses last year, but anyway, um, because the way that they've built this team, they've definitely built it for Greg Roman's offense, for Greg Roman to have no excuses for him to have depth, for him to have the pieces that he uses the most in his offense. Um, so with, with that being said, uh, if Greg Roman, if they can't get it done, and it's like, oh, okay, well. But you look at last year. Last year, you could be like, oh, okay, injuries. Use the injuries excuse. Okay, cool. Year before that, say, oh, COVID. COVID messed us up. Da, da, da. They messed up our offseason. Okay. The year before that, oh, yeah, we went 14-2. and two. So I think that may be how the Ravens may be viewing it. Like, okay, 2020, Greg Roman had an excuse. 2021, he had an excuse. But this year, let's try to build this thing up to where there are no excuses. But what I'm hoping that uh, happens, I'm hoping that um, they can incorporate a lot of what they did last year in the past. Again, last year at the passing game, it took strides forward. But I still believe that was only due to all their running backs being hurt. All of them. So they couldn't run the ball like they wanted to. The offensive line was oof, big yikes. Um, but I would love to see them incorporate a lot of what they did last year with the passing game and also continue to run the ball as well. And just, again, like we said before, if they can have a plan B, if plan A isn't working, have a plan B that you can go to to where it's like, oh, okay, we do have other options and be able to switch it up, be able to go game to game and have different uh, options as far as your offense, not trying to run the same thing against everybody, making adjustments. That's one of the biggest things, making adjustments and really consistently attacking your opponent's weaknesses. 
Your opponent can't stop the run. If you're running the ball, you keep running that ball until they stop it. Of course, you're going to throw in some passes here and there, too. If your opponent can't stop the pass, okay, throw that ball on them, man. Throw it. Like, they, they, they really need to key in on what their opponents are bad at. Take advantages. Create mismatches. Uh, anyway. Um, so, but again, it's not just Giro. Giro is not the only end-all, be-all issue. He's not. He's really not. And I know a lot of Ravens fans think it is all Giro. Oh, Giro, Giro, Giro. No. This is news way before Giro, man. This has been an issue way before Giro. Way before. But the reason that Giro gets a lot of the heat right now is because the Ravens have that guy at quarterback. They have not had somebody like this at quarterback ever. Joe Flacco was cool and he did his thing, obviously. Especially playoff Joe. Playoff Joe wasn't nothing to mess with, baby. Regular season Joe, you can mess with him, but playoff Joe, he wasn't nothing to mess with, man. Straight up. You already know what time it was with that. Well, after the first couple of years. First couple of years, but after the first couple of years, it's like, oh, okay, let's go. But now you have a Lamar Jackson at the quarterback position. And the reason why Giro gets so much of the blame is because so many people feel like the Ravens, they just, they fumble in this thing, man. They fumble in this thing. And they have, they've had, they have had so many opportunities to really capitalize on having a Lamar Jackson at quarterback. But they haven't maximized his potential. And it frustrates people. So what most Ravens fans do, they like, oh, offensive coordinator. Oh, man, our offensive coordinator, he's bad. And that's what's been happening over the years for the longest. But remember with Joe Flacco, too, is the same things. They're like, hey, we don't feel like Ravens are really capitalizing on Joe Flacco as much as they could. And everybody, oh, offensive coordinator. Offensive coordinator. So it was complaints about offensive coordinator after offensive coordinator after OC after OC after OC after OC after OC. Same thing is happening with Lamar Jackson. That's why I say it's philosophy, man. It's a philosophy thing. And we know Ravens, had they were built on defense. And we're not saying to throw out the defense. No, nobody's saying that. But it's okay to, to upgrade. Get with the times, man. Get with the times. And invest more into the passing game. That, that's it. Or at least in my opinion. That, that's what they invest more into the passing game. Because that is it, it, a passing league, right? And again, nobody's saying to get rid of the run. You can still run a ball, but you need to do more in the passing game. So that's why I said, like, what were they, the direction they were going last year? Well, it was nice. It was nice. But you, you take that and you pair it with a good running game, too. Oof, that, that could be a beautiful thing. But anyway. Back to this. He said, um, I, I can guarantee John Harbaugh that if he turns the page on Giro, Lamar will stay. I can guarantee that if you give Lamar at the least 35 passing attempts a game, Lamar is staying. See, even with that, I, I can't even put a number on it. I wouldn't be like, all right, yep, 35 passing attempts a game. There you go. Lamar. I, I, I couldn't put a number on it because every game plan is different. Every game is different. There are going to be some games where, again, the, the run game is dominating. Now, you don't want to, if the run game is dominating, you don't want to just switch to the pass game just because. If the, that's why I said every game is different. If the pass game is dominating, hey, keep airing it out. So it, it, just, it just all depends. But he said, he has stated many times, I'd rather pass than run the ball. Yeah. And that, of course, was speaking about himself as the actual runner. Now, we know he's still going to take off. He's still going to get his, but all the design runs, they could cut back a lot on those, too. That's why you got your running back. So, anyway, um, he might not even be the best. <laughs> he said he might not even be the best golfer, but Lamar has Mahomes slash Allen level talent, and he wants to be treated as such. I agree. That's what I was talking about earlier, just not maximizing his potential. So, uh, But with the team that's currently constructed, they are leaving the future up to chance. Uh, with their stubbornness not to change philosophy... Oh, he got into it. I guess I should have just kept reading. Uh, with their stubbornness not to change philosophies, with their unwillingness to pivot, I fear that the Ravens can lose more than just a divisional playoff game. 
I fear they can lose the man that brought them there. Stay ready so you ain't got to get ready. Question. Oh, I, th I thought that was it. He, he said all that to lead up to this question. Uh, what do you think the Ravens need to do not only to contend for a Super Bowl, but keep Lamar Jackson at the helm for the future to come? Ooh, 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 okay, 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 okay. What do the Ravens need to do to contend for a Super Bowl and to keep Lamar? Show him that you believe him. That's it. Simple as that, even if it may not be so simple to people. I think you got you to gotta show them that you believe in them. And I, I stand by that. Right now, the Ravens have not shown Lamar Jackson that they truly believe in him. They haven't. Because of the lack of investments made at pass catcher. They haven't shown that they believe in him. They drafted a couple guys. They drafted two first-round receivers. Cool. They just got rid of one. All right. They drafted a third round, two third-round receivers. Um, one fourth round, one fifth or sixth round. I always forget what round James Prochet got drafted in. Um, they signed Willie Sneed. No, Willie Sneed was for Flacco, as a matter of fact. But he did sign an extension to stay. So they did sign Willie Sneed. They signed Seth Roberts. They signed the uh, washed up Des Bryant. They signed injury prone Sammy Watkins. Um, so you see the you see the quality there. You see the quality. And like with Rashad Bateman, I kind of exclude him because he's to, he's to be determined. Last year was his first year. Uh, and it's expected that he's going to be good or it's to be determined. Um, so for them to, even them trading away, the guy that Lamar had the best chemistry with, he got rid of him. Got rid of him. And now he didn't want to be there. So I understand, oh, you don't want people there that don't want to be there because it could reflect on the field. It could show. They don't want to be there. It's going to be, ooh, yikes. <laughs> um, but the the lack of true investment in a uh, significant pass catcher. Again, quality over quantity. Because you could, you, could, you could draft all the receivers in the world you want to, but is the quality there? Why haven't they gone out to get that guy? And why, when it comes to getting that guy at receiver, they always fall short? Again, this is not it's not just a problem that's been going on since Lamar's been here. It happened with Flacco too. It happened with him too. And he when they really like gave Flacco somebody who was like that at receiver, look what look what he did. Look how far the team got. When they had the Derek Masons. Oh, nice. When they got Anquan Bolden. Look look what that changed. Flacco regular season numbers, they were the same, but come playoffs, oh boy, come playoffs, that changed everything, man, everything, everything. So why don't they do that for Lamar? Because you know, if Lamar stay healthy the whole regular season, he's going to be fine. And we just know, like, all right, yeah, and it's, again, not, it's not an arrogant way. It's not an old cocky way. There ain't nobody on that. But if Lamar Jackson stays healthy for the regular season, the expectation is the Ravens will be in the playoffs. The Ravens will be in the playoffs. Well, like nine times out of ten, Lamar's healthy, they'll be there. But wh why haven't they gone out to go get that guy for him? All these other young quarterbacks, both proven and unproven, but some of them to get proven, they went out and got that guy. So because a lot of these other young quarterbacks, they were they were not proven. Some of them still not. Jalen Hurts, they went and got this dude, uh, AJ Brown. Oh my goodness, they went and got him, AJ Brown. AJ Brown had Devonta Smith from last year, but went and, and that was his guy um, from college, I believe. And they said, no, no we're we not done there. We're not done. No. We ain't finished. We're going to get you A.J. Brown. That, that dude is a baller, man. I, I love A.J. Brown's game. Um, even with Tannehill. Is Ryan Tannehill better than Lamar Jackson? I'll let you decide that. Um, but Ryan Tannehill had A.J. Brown. But they were like, you know what? No, we, we want more. 
when they got Julio too. Now Julio was ooh, that was like the uh, the Titans version of Sammy Watkins. <laughs> yeah, um, but the the Ravens they got their own Sammy Watkins. Mm, yeah, and and see the thing with that man, it, it's like there was such a low expectation. Um, for Sammy Watkins, I think for most Ravens fans, I don't think anybody expected him to go off last season or even finish the whole season. I don't think anybody expected that. They knew going into it, all right, Sammy Watkins, all right, cool, but that can't be it. And I remember when we signed him, I kept saying it, that they cannot put all their eggs in the Sammy Watkins basket. It, it can't be it. But then they drafted Rashad Bateman and Tylen Wallace. Um, but then injuries like kind of threw, threw a lot of stuff off. Um, but yeah, man, you, you just see all these other young quarterbacks get provided for. That's what you see. And for me, it's like, why not for Lamar? Why not for him? Why don't, uh, and, and I know, um, oh, what is it? It's, uh, one of my guys made a really good point recently. He said, when you talk about adding a wide receiver, of significance, um, then people will be like, oh, man, he's going to – if they add another wide receiver, he's going to take away snaps uh, from all young wide receivers that we have now. This, he's going to mess up their development. But if you talk about adding a running back, adding an offensive lineman, adding a corner, adding a linebacker, adding a safety, adding anything else, don't nobody be on that at all. Well, nobody be on that. It's just when it comes to wide receivers, that's when everybody flips out about the development. Even if it's a significant guy. If, if you're saying that for like a washed up guy, something like, oh, okay. But even for a significant guy, a young guy, this guy entering his prime, people say the same thing. And it's like, why not? That competition should bring the best out of them, right? All of them. Make everybody step up that much more. And it will give you that much more quality depth if everybody is like that. So that's what I feel like um, they would need to contend for a Super Bowl. Because um, right now, I think they are very close. I, I think they are very close, especially obviously with health. But the biggest thing, um, the biggest question mark is that wide receiver. Because it's just so much unknown. I feel like at so many other positions, like, you know, you know what you're getting. You know what you can get from the offensive line. Um, I mean, anything will be better than what they had last year, even the past two years, uh, especially if Ronnie Stanley's healthy. Oh, boy, that, that would change everything for the better. Oh, my goodness, that would change everything for the better. If Ronnie Stanley's healthy, oh, my goodness, that would be great. But offensive line, you pretty much know what you're going to get. Running backs, you know what you're getting. Tight ends, you know. Cornerback, again, all this stuff, as, as long as they're healthy. Secondary, you, yeah. Linebackers, that, that, uh, you kind of saw it. But, well, I mean, they got Josh Bynes, Patrick Queen, and then the outside linebackers. Like, so you pretty much know what you're going to get over. But linebacker, that, that could be a little bit of a question mark. D-line, you know what you're getting. Hopefully some improved interior pass rush. We'll see. Um, but, yeah, man. So you, you pretty much know what you're getting everywhere else. Kicker. Right, well, you could say punter. There's a question mark because we don't know about Jordan Stout yet. We'll see how he does in the pros. But, yeah. But wide receiver? We don't know. We don't know. So this is one of the biggest reasons that I just, I've wanted them to get a proven guy. A proven guy uh, to really help take them over the top. Um, I would still love a DK Metcalf. Uh, no, he ain't been. I don't think it's gonna happen. But it's, he ain't. He ain't been at the OTAs. I'm like, oh well, it's their hope. Uh, so people been talking about Terry McLaurin, scary Terry. I don't think that happens because they just got a new quarterback. And why, if they just got a new quarterback, why would they give away one of their new quarterbacks' weapons? So, I don't know, man. Who could it be? We'll see. Hopefully, we'll see. But I, I, I just don't know. But, yeah, that's what I feel like the Ravens need to do. Yeah.